Are you going for the chain drive over the belt? Do you know it's just a hassle? Think again. That's the kind of thing you may hear if you say you're going with a chain drive, and the same if you pick the belt. And today, we're getting into it too. Chain VS Belt So, which one is best? Well, what if we told you that there is no best? It's a choice. The choice between a chain and a belt on your e-bike is more about how you ride. You might think it rides smoothly with a belt, gets power and flexibility with a chain, but that's not the full story. There are deeper surprises and trade-offs that only show up after you've hit hundreds or thousands of kilometers. Today, let's peel back the layers, things that people usually don't talk about until you've actually lived with these systems. Let's start with what these systems are. You probably know the basics. But for those who might be a little confused, all right, chain drive is that classic metal chain wrapped around sprockets that we often see in the regular bikes. It is usually paired with a derailleur or an internal hub. It's on a huge range of e-bikes, from budget commuters to powerful mid-drives. Now belt drive? That's different. Its carbon-reinforced, grease-free belts ride on smooth pulleys like the Gates CDN. They need specific frames, tensioners, and pulleys. They demand precision, and once they're built, you're locked into that system and those parts. So both systems get you rolling. But the way they integrate with your ride, your maintenance vibe, and your future upgrades, that's where things differ. Now about the experience and starting with a question. What do you want to hear as you ride? Morning bird song or mechanical whispers? Because belt drives deliver that silent, serene glide you dream of when the city is still waking up. It's smooth in a way that almost feels automatic. If you're riding through the city, maybe weaving past traffic or cruising through a park, there's this clean, almost effortless sensation. But if you ride on a chain drive, take the 10 ways AGU-X or a Bosch-powered Reason Mueller, you get that satisfying feedback, that unmistakable vibe that you're connected to your bike. You get gear shifts, torquey response, little nudges through each downshift. And we've seen riders say they actually miss that physical voice when they switch to a belt. For some, the belt feels disconnected. So, neither is better. It is just different and exactly how you want your ride to feel. So far, we've talked about their personality. Now let's get into their behavior over time. Chains need your attention. You've got to clean them, oil them, check the tension now and then. If you're riding in wet conditions, especially in places where road salt or dust kicks up, they wear down quicker. Something most promo pages leave out. Chain life depends on your weather, riding style, and habits. A dry, disciplined rider might hit 4,000 miles on a premium KMC chain but muddy, forgotten rides, and that lifespan halves in a season. But they repay you in availability and quick fixes. Snap a chain link going up a hill. You pop out a tool, slap in a quick link, and you're back. Belt drives, on the other hand, promise 20,000 plus miles without maintenance. They don't rust, but they stretch. And when a belt snaps on a long route, you're walking. There's no emergency patch up. You need a full replacement and a frame built for it. So a belt is easy until it isn't, while chain demands effort but gives you repairability at every corner. That's the tension nobody warns you about. Now, time to spill the truth. High Torque loves chains. Yeah, chains are built for torque. They can handle monster motors like the Bosch Performance Line CX or Shimano EP8 that dish out super high Newton meter. And belts hit their wall around 90 Newton meters fine for hub motors like Bafang or Shimano steps. But mid drives at 85 plus torque? That gets sketchy. Take a Q belt bike. You're riding smooth and quiet, but push it too hard and you risk slippage or wear. So if your commute includes steep hills or you're bigger than your backpack, chain drive just might be the smart, safe choice. This is where you find out what kind of rider you really are. Belt riders adore the clean, no-panel drama. They love not touching chain grease and vibe with the clean, discreet aesthetic. It's popular with commuters, city riders, and folks who just want to get from point A to B without touching a bottle of chain oil ever again. 
It feels modern, almost like the electric car version of a bike. But chain riders? There's this hands-on, flexible side. They often identify as tinkerers. They love custom cassettes, 12-speed upgrades, and derailleur tuning. They value flexibility. It feels more old school, but in the best way, like you're still in control. So neither group is wrong. It just depends on what kind of rider you are and what kind of experience you want. All right, money talks, where reality hits the fan. Let's start with belts. In the present time, something like the Priority Classic Plus belt comes in around $600, and a Cube Hide Pro can hit $1,500 to $1,700. Belt replacement runs $150 to $250. Factor in labor if you're not building your own bike. Chain setups are cheaper out of the box. A 10 ways CGO 600 Pro C with Shimano. Chain drive train runs near $1,500. Chains cost around $20 each, and you probably swap every three to 4,000 miles. Want to upgrade? Getting a new cassette or derailleur might cost another 60 to 150, but it's your choice. Here's something people don't say enough where you ride changes everything. Because when you're deep into a forest trail or miles off the main road, the type of drivetrain starts to matter in a different way. A chain might rattle more, sure. But when something goes wrong, you can usually sort it out with a basic kit and a spare link. Belts? Well, they're quiet and smooth, until they're not. And when they fail, you need a full replacement, not just a roadside fix. And that's the thing, it's not about which one's perfect, it's about knowing what each system gives you and what it might ask for later. So maybe belt drive feels like peace. You just ride, no sound, no mess, no worry. And maybe chain drive feels like control. You know how it works and you know you can work with it when something breaks. No right answer, just a different kind of trust. One gives you calm, the other gives you tools. And that's the story your drivetrain tells. Not just how it rides on day one, but how it shows up when it's tested. So before you decide, think about what kind of rider you are. What kind of rides do you love? What kind of backup do you want if things go sideways? In the end, no one else can answer that for you. It's your ride, your rhythm, your road. So that was all. Share your opinion in the comments. Thanks for watching. If you found it helpful, give it a like and subscribe for more videos.